somehow stuck together for like about a year before Andy joined. And, you know, Andy discovered us, plucked us from obscurity, and suddenly we had an actual musician in the band, and that's when Stink started writing songs. Wow, you mentioned Andy joining there because obviously originally you had uh, Henry Paravani, who was your your drummer, uh, your, your guitarist at that point. But he was a good friend of yours, wasn't he? But um, in terms of moving him on and bringing Andy in, was it a difficult decision because he was a friend, or were you quite ruthless with that decision? Quite ruthless, but it was a difficult decision because he was our friend. I mean, he was the life of the party. He was the only pe member of the band that anybody in London liked. All the critics, <laughs> you know, they spotted. Sting and I as being carpetbaggers, but Henry was actually the real thing in his dark glasses and his Corsican uh, charisma. He, he was really charismatic, but he only knew four chords at the time. He, he's actually become quite a good guitarist, but at that time, he was very limited in his vocabulary. Um, so we had to play within the confines of his four chords, and Sting actually did start trying to write songs there, and I think it was actually very useful ultimately, because it taught him how to distill his ideas into a much simpler form. I mean, he, previously he'd been writing, you know, jazz compositions, which are way too complex. Um, so the punk form and, Andy, and Henry's limitations kind of distilled his musicality. And he said when he was writing songs, the first ones that he produced were not Message in a Bottle. I mean, they're, they're still pretty good. Message, uh, Visions of the Night and a couple other songs he, he pulled out were pretty good they're better than my songs that's for sure uh but they weren't the big hits that you're all familiar with yet until andy joined with way more than four chords huge mo musical vocabulary and that's when the police that you're all familiar with that's when it really began but we still starved for another for the rest of 1978 until finally we went off to america indeed so how did you find andy then how did you how did you entice him how did you lure him into the band well he was the session guitarist on a session that Sting and I were the drummer and bass player on. We were the rhythm section. We were actually a hell of a rhythm section. Everyone wanted us because we had this pocket, this this um, this holy grail of rhythm sections, which is this groove that we, we had with each other. Um, and so in walks the legendary, at that time, uh, guitarist Andy Summers, who'd played with everybody on every session, really expensive guy. Um, and we spent the day of playing actual music, which was refreshing at, on one hand, but driving home that night in the car, Sting is seething with musicality. I mean, he had sublimated it all. He knew the flag of convenience. He knew what our mission was. Okay, I'll be punk and I'll shout all the lyrics and, and uh, endure the scene because it's a wall that we can climb. We can conquer this world. I'll do it, I'll do it. But then we spent the day playing actual music Oh, he was that night driving home. He was ranting and raving. You know, Stuart, you know, we got to get rid of Henry. We got to get him. We got to get somebody like that. You know, Stuart, you're a better guitarist than Andy. And you're crap, he told me. That gave me pause. <laughs> wow, that was an unexpected accolade. Really? Better than Henry, even though I'm crap? That's something. Uh, anyhow, I, I, I could humor him because I knew we can never afford that guy. Uh, even if he was to join, he'd last two minutes and then we'd be stuck. And so I didn't think much of it. But what I didn't know at the time was that Andy also had been conniving and scheming and thinking those two guys, frat band, but those two guys, if I was in that band, they'd really be something. So finally, long story short, it's all in the book. The long story is in the book, the short story here on the radio. Um, he volunteered. He said, hey, you, you and that bass player. You've got something, but you need me, and I accept. And thus was the police born.